بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to Fiqh Al-Mu'amalat series Today's topic is about uh, the pillars of the contract the elements of the pillar of the contract We have talked um, and highlighted in the previous stations uh, the definition of the contract so we move on today to talk uh, in a high level description on the um, elements of the pillar of the contract where we will be talking about the two contracting parties, the subject matter and the sira. So as I mentioned, <clears throat> uh, we would like to uh, a kind of describe the pillar of the contract um, in a high level approach and in the following sessions we will pick up each pillar then we zoom into it with more discussion and we, with more details. So based on the definitions and the, uh, uh, of, the, of the contract that has been mentioned previously, it's a kind of a, a connections between the offer and acceptance, uh, which mark its effect on the subject matter, uh, whereby price goes to the um, sellers and the goods goes to the buyer. Uh, so basically from the definition, what you can highlight, uh, there are parties involved in the contract and hence we are talking about what's so called al-aqidan or the two contracting party in this case the buyer and the seller which is the first pillar then we are talking about connections of offer and acceptance so we are talking about offer and acceptance which is the sira or which is the expression of the contract which is the second pillar then the buyers <clears throat> and the sellers when they express their offer and acceptance on what on something that someone wants to buy and the other one wants to uh, put equivalent price to it, which is the price and the goods, which is the third pillars. So as a result of that, we may um, say that there are three major pillars in the contract. Three major pillars or three major elements or three major components of the contract. The first one, the contracting party. Um, or the two contracting party. It depends if the contractual party are two or three or more than that. So the contracting party, <clears throat> which is known in Arabic as well, al-aqidan, um, meaning in the case if we give example, we always give example on a sales because it's a typical contract that we are going to discuss first. In the case of sales, uh, we have a buyer and a seller. So these are the two contracting parties, or we call them an aqidam, that represent the four pillars of the contract. The second pillar <clears throat> is the subject matter of the contract, or mawdu al-aqd. This subject matter, or mawdu al-aqd, in the case of sales, is goods and price. Goods and the price. Now the third pillar is a sira, or the expression of the contract or the statement of the contract, which is uh, the issuance of the offer and acceptance. So these are basically uh, the uh, three pillars uh, of the contract. You may say there are three pillars in short, or you may say there are six pillars in details, which means um, the first pillar, price and goods, so two, buyer and seller, two, and offer and acceptance, two. So basically six. Price and goods, buyer and sellers, offer and acceptance. Either six pillars, and each one has the terms and conditions, or in general or in brief, you may say uh, three pillars, but each pillar represents two components. Uh, so we have price and goods, seller and buyer, and offer and acceptance in the bilateral contract will require more than one party. So let me hear. Uh, uh, highlight the uh, Sharia requirement for each one. But here I will just list them without any details, just to have an idea uh, what are the terms and the conditions required in each pillar. And as I mentioned in the coming session, we'll pick up its sessions, one pillar, then we we'll discuss uh, in details. So the first one, which is uh, price and goods, uh, there are in general, high-level description for requirements, a legality of the uh, uh, subject matter, 
uh, the specifications, meaning uh, both parties have to know uh, the subject matter. When we say subject matter, we have to keep in mind we're talking about price and goods. Don't direct your thought to the goods, then you forgot about the price. Price is part of it. So when we say subject matter, we are talking about both goods and price, because sometimes people, when you say subject matter, subject matter, so they always focus on the uh, subject matter, like for example, house or a car or a book, for example, then they forget about the price. And when we say subject matter, basically both price and goods. So if there is any requirements, is applicable for both of them, of course, depending on the nature of each one. So the first requirements of the price and goods basically is the legality, they should be legal. The second one, the specification, they should be known to both parties. The third one, the capability and the ability to hand over the subject matter to the other party. Uh, and the following one, the subject matter should be in existence. Of course, with some exception that we will talk about it uh, later on. So high level requirements that are for requirements. Of course, later on, when we detail out, we may break down each one to further uh, sub-requirements uh, uh, that may need it. Uh, so the second one, or the second pillars, um, which is the seller and the buyer, uh, number one, the puberty of the two parties. Parties could be female or male. So we are talking about the competency requirements here, such as the puberty, we are talking about the sanity, the sound mind, and the maturity ability to manage finance uh, in appropriate way. Offer and acceptance uh, using the past tense, which is recommended, confirmation of the offer and acceptance, and the clarity of the offer and, ac and acceptance, and also the confirmations uh, and the connectivity uh, of the offer and acceptance, which is Majlis al -Aqt. So this is the uh, uh, general requirements in brief uh, of the six pillars, or these three pillars, of course, each one requires details uh, and requires uh, what so-called further discussion that we will provide it uh, in detail later on when we pick up uh, one uh, pillars by one uh, into the future discussions. So I just want to highlight here that, that the Sharia compliance requirements, when we talk later on maybe in the coming session about the Sharia compliance, the Sharia compliance requirements basically somehow indirectly uh, and directly are derived from this, meaning that from here you can build, uh, start to build your checklist on the contract. Of course, this is a, a contract and uh, most of the requirements are applicable and apply to sales, uh, but it could be also somehow applied to other contracts as well, as, uh, such as leasing uh, uh, and uh, partnership and so on and so forth with minor modifications of the terminology that has been mentioned here. But the point here is that uh, by understanding these pillars, uh, three or six, uh, and appreciations of the requirements of each one, uh, from here you can start build your checklist on the compliance, meaning that uh, is there any contract? So you have to start doing the tick, 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 tick on each requirement to ensure at least the first level uh, at the high level descriptions of the contract has been fulfilled, then you uh, zoom down to other specific requirements according to the applications of the contract. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the uh, uh, this is the overall uh, description of the contract, and I think uh, we we'll just uh, um, make stop here, and uh, we will have a further discussions. Um, on providing uh, further details on each one in the coming session. With that, thank you very much, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.